Welcome to the 2012 Coda Electric. This was a brand new abandoned vehicle owned by my friend and colleague Kyle over here with Out of Spec Reviews. And today we are starting part one of a multiple part series restoring a brand new electric Coda. Welcome back to another Out of Spec Detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Let's jump into it. Well, this is a detail that I have been super excited for. I know Kyle has been pumped about it, and I know a lot of the viewers have been really excited about this project. Before we really get into it, this video is gonna be jumping into the background story of how Kyle actually acquired this vehicle, what my plans are for it, and looking at like the current condition and figuring out, okay, what can we do, what can't we do? So first off, Kyle, Introduce yourself a little bit. Tell me about this car because this was a really cool story. Well, yeah, so so on the reviews channel under the out of spec umbrella, we review cars. And um, I happen to be doing a charge point shoot in the Silicon Valley area. And uh, I got a message on Twitter from now my friend Nick. And he's like, dude, I work at the dealer not far from you. And we have a brand new unsold, left on the lot, baking in the sun for 10 years, Coda Electric. And most people don't know about Coda, but this came out in 2012 really as like a Ford Focus Electric and Nissan Leaf competitor. Um, I think the body is a high face shy bow, which is like some <laughs> Chinese slash Mitsubishi conglomerate. Um, you know, the way I always describe it to people, because I'm like, I've got a Coda, no one knows what that is. Uh, I always say like, basically imagine just a car. <laughs> it is the, the most generic car you could have. Nothing exciting. Uh, it's pretty ugly, but it, it does have actually great OE wheels, some LED treatments. It's a little bit maybe slightly more interesting than the uh, Corolla of the time. Sure. But, you know, we all know Colton loves to do new car prep details. So here we go. 57 <laughs> miles on the odometer. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the craziest part. 57 miles on this. This was literally beached in the back of the DG DG parking lot, just like literally crumbled into the actual asphalt. Just an insane story with this. Yeah, and we did a whole video of us, you know, sort of finding the car, if you will. Yep. And then we turned it. So, yeah, I, Nick emailed me or messaged me on Twitter. I went over there. We shot some videos. That's all documented. What's cool is everything has been documented on this car since we got it. And that's sort of part of the plan of Out of Spec is getting these weird electric cars and telling their story, like my Renault Twizy over here and some <laughs> other things. Um, but you know, after filming those videos for DG DG with Nick, they decided to just give out of spec this one. Yeah. So uh, technically I paid $1 for it. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a transaction price. Uh, I don't think I ever actually handed them the $1, okay. <laughs> but that's the on paper transaction. So you still uh, owe them a little I, bit of money. <laughs> I owe DG DG $1. They gave me a car. They've also let us review their Hummer EV and Lyric and other stuff that we couldn't get from the GM press fleet. So they're awesome to work with. And a huge shout out to DG DG for letting us make this content and honestly, truly doing a little bit of a barn find detail on this, yes. um, which will be fascinating for this channel. So uh, DGDG gave us the car. I drove out with my Rivian and towed this back from Colorado on the back of the Rivian on my trailer, which was interesting. And then it got here to Colorado, I want to say four months ago, five months ago, something like that. And it just kind of sat. Yep, it's been baking. Yeah, it's been in the sun. We left it outside. It hasn't been like cared for or anything. We did charge up the battery, make sure that was okay. That was actually the craziest part. Yeah. When we found the Coda on the DG DG lot, you know, everyone's like, oh, electric car batteries will die, mm -hmm. all this stuff. This is actually a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. It's LFP. Uh, which is like a really hardy form of chemistry. And we jumped the 12 volt, which had died, but we jumped the 12 yep. volt turned the ignition and it still had 30% state of charge and just drove away after 10 years. Yeah. More than 10 years. Of and just again, only there. 57 miles. Like this was delivered there. We think probably maybe test driven one time, maybe. Yeah, I think it had 48 or 49 miles. Yeah. It felt, it was hard to cross the 50 mark. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. But what a story on this. And really the whole premise behind this series is we're gonna try and bring this thing back as much as possible. Now I talked a little bit before in the intro about things that we can do and can't do. Now, of course, this being just sat outside in Northern California for the past 
12, 13 years, I guess it is now, the paint is completely faded. Maybe you'll be able to see it on the hood and roof here. We're definitely going to take a deep dive walkthrough on this thing and see what it actually looks like. But I'm super pumped for this. I know the viewers are too. And Kyle's been like, when are you getting the Coda done? We got to get this thing done. Absolutely. He's pumped about it. So I am too. So let's jump into walking around the car and seeing the current state of the Coda Electric. Well, if you've, any of you are wondering, this cable back here is running to the 12 volt battery. This thing was actually dead. Kyle has, of course, not even replaced the 12 volt, but- I haven't done a thing to it. The first no. step was like, let's get it like physically looking nice. Yep. And then my friend Robert from Aging Wheels actually has another head unit and a door card and some other things to get it dialed. But truly, we haven't um, we haven't had the title for it, so we haven't been able to drive it. Um, what, actually, maybe we should explain this. This is a big part of the story we haven't talked about yet. Uh, the this Coda was sold. Let me grab the window sticker really quick. It was sold originally to Coda of Silicon Valley, owned by DGDG Del Grande Dealer Group, and you can see here it was sold to Coda of Silicon Valley. Now, because this was never retail sold from Coda of Silicon Valley, there's no title for this car. There never has been a title issued. There was no way for them to transfer ownership. And they couldn't sell me the car, technically, because they're no longer a Coda of Silicon Valley authorized retailer because Coda's dead. Sure. So it was kind of a little bit of a hectic situation. So they went back and forth for the last five, six months with California DMV, and I'm not sure how they finally got it figured out, but um, they got the title into the ownership of Coda or of DGDG. And so I think technically I'll be the second owner on the title, okay. but I'll really the first owner. Um, and so now that should arrive this week, which cool. means I can get license plates on this and we can actually drive the Coda. Uh, the only thing I've done mechanically to it so far is I've put new Nokian tires on it. Yes. I've gone for the Nokian tires one all seasons, uh, the standard tires, of course, after about six years, especially 10 years, they were melted into the pavement. They dry rot, not safe at all. So we put new tires on it. But aside from the new tires, everything is fine. The wheels were like fused to the hubs. Discount tire was like knocking them <laughs> off. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, but it was actually funny. Um, once people start learning about this car, like we brought it to discount tire, all those things, um, they they get really excited. They're like, yeah. oh, we're going to be really gentle with it. Like, you know, that was really awesome. The other thing we haven't mentioned yet is Colton would not touch this car. It was too nasty on the inside <laughs> Yes, because we think someone lived, potentially died on the inside when Don't it was know. sitting in the lot. So we actually brought it to another detailer, one of those like sketchy, I don't know, mobile, it wasn't bad. He did a good job, but just to like knock all the crap off yep. of it. Uh, especially on the interior. I think he gave the exterior a wash, didn't make any difference, but the interior he did, I guess, vacuum, yep. wash, soap down. Yeah, so inside here, let's pop this open. This is kind of the crazy part. I mean, honestly, minus the head unit missing and a little bit of issue over here on the door card, the thing looks pretty darn new in all honesty. It's really impressive. Um, and yeah, honestly, I didn't want to touch this thing. It was kind of at the point of being a little bit of a biohazard, I would say. I would agree. There was some some stains on there. We didn't know what they came from. So yes. he steamed all of that off, got the car completely sanitized. Yep. And it actually came back looking brand new. I totally agree. So all definitely, you know, it's been sitting outside since he actually did that. And we've been kind of ripping it around the complex here a little bit. Kyle doing huge skids out here, <laughs> yeah, you know. a big skid. Yeah, this thing does crazy burnouts. It's truly pretty fun. So I'll come through here and see if we can kind of massage this leather in a little bit. It is definitely stiff would be maybe a good word. Yeah, it's hard to know like what the original seats looked like. Sure. But what it almost seems like to me is it's all bloated. Yeah. Like if you look at the backrest on this seat, like it seems like this is all stretched here and like the center bit should be wider. It just seems morphed, although it is also Coda, so it's hard to know how much of that <laughs> sure. was manufacturing defect or because of time. Sure, so this sat in San Jose-ish area. Yep, San Jose. Okay, so lots of humidity there with lots of rain and things like that. So I would bet if this car sat in Southern California, like LA area, we would probably see a lot more damage to the paint. But sure. I mean, actually for being a 13 year old car that has been literally abandoned, I'm actually surprised how well a lot of things have held up. Now, the big thing we're gonna get into are areas like this, where it looks like the clear coat is completely failed on it. Now, up here on the hood, you'll see somewhat similar where this is actually flaking off. 
Our whole intention with this car is to bring it back as nice as humanly possible. If we may have to repaint a panel or two here, I think that's totally acceptable. Now, I do wanna show you guys so you can see how matted out this hood is. It's truly crazy. I mean, the sides don't look all too bad. You can see quite a bit of gloss down here, but I actually did a test spot right when it came off the truck, when Kyle dropped it off here. Just a quick polish. I didn't even touch the thing. I literally just grabbed a polisher and went. Yeah, just went <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's try this. And this gave me some serious inspiration for how this entire car could look. So I'm super pumped for this. Now, we're gonna definitely dive into all the details what my process is gonna be. But yeah, just wanted to show you guys around this bad boy. Now, of course, all of the trim here is very, very faded. And from what I understand, Kyle, parts are very, very hard to find for this. If yeah. we break anything, there's no replacing. Right. So everything we have here, we need to be gentle with. That's right. It's, it's like, treat it like a 918. Yeah. <laughs> or okay. Carrera GT. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. So yeah, this is not a car that I'm going to go crazy on. I do have some concerns, of course, up front here as well. A lot of electrical components. I'll talk to Kyle maybe off camera or maybe now on Ooh, camera yeah. what you actually think I should do up there. Let me pop this actually open and we can look up front here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so hard to know what this car is sort of rated for and capable of because no one's really ever done anything with it. Now, there have been some cases of them uh, obviously running and being daily driven with over 100,000 miles, but I think they only sold 112 or 116 total. Yeah. So this is the rarest car in the out-of-spec fleet. This is so, like, so incredibly rare. So just a few things I'm looking at here. Of course, we've got a lot of fallen trees, dried leaves in here. I think we actually cleaned this cowl out slightly when the other detailer just quickly went through the interior. Mm -hmm. But what I'm a little bit concerned about, if we do end up cleaning this area out, is of course areas like this having, I would assume this is a cabin filter inlet, which is just a paper filter, which is quite strange. <laughs> know, that's wild. Just completely open. It doesn't look like it's missing any sort of covering or anything like that. My concern as a detailer is if we come in here with some heavy chemicals um, and start spraying all these electrical components, that kind of concerns me a little bit. So what I may do instead, again, we'll get into this later on, use a light degreaser, something like Simple Green on here and not use the high pressure system, probably just like a hose rinse down. And I think that would get probably, you know, 80 to 90% of the dirt and grime in here so we can kind of restore it back. Yeah, this is gonna be a driver. We're not gonna just put it in a museum. I mean, one day, yes, I think we'll probably have like a little collection where people can come and look at all the weird cars that's in the back of my head. How do we do that one day? Um, but I think, you know, let's tape off the filter. I think just like garden hose pressure exactly. should be fine just to kind of get it dusted. But ultimately this isn't what people are going to see. But I do think, you know, let's just try and maintain it, take care of it look at it and uh, you know, just try and knock stuff off. But of course, like these stickers are starting to come slightly loose. So we just wanna be mindful to try and you know, leave as much of this stuff on as possible. I love, I've never really even looked under here. You can see all these Chinese letters on all this stuff. Um, interestingly, the whole drivetrain is from UQM, which is now Danfoss, and they are literally 10 minutes away from here. Yeah. Which so is if just the motor insane. ever fails, I'll just drive it right down the road <laughs> and say, someone's got to help us. And we know the guys over there and I think they'd be down to help us, you know, restore this thing if it ever has an issue with, with that uh, motor, which the motors are not the problem on these. Uh, actually, electrically speaking, these are fairly solid considering how um, little engineering time went into it. I can only imagine. And actually there's been quite a few people who worked on this car who have reached out through LinkedIn and others. And the stories they tell me are just like, wow, what a disaster. They were, there was a company that was going in and like ripping out components because they weren't paying their bills. They're like going on the factory line and taking uh, some components. And maybe we'll be able to tell all those stories one day. But um, ultimately I think like, let's just try and leave as much of this as we can but also just get it kind of clean. Yep, exactly. So I, I think that's a, a great premise behind this is we're trying to restore this you know, give this car a little bit of its life back, if you will. And then secondly, and most importantly, I would say on something like this is preserve it. So we wanna give it some sort of protection. I actually had a company reach out for 
to test their ceramic coating. So what we're actually gonna do, once we get the paint polished up, we're basically gonna split the car in half. We're gonna do a two series kind of test on this. And this car is gonna live its life outside like most of Kyle's vehicles. So we're gonna put these things really to the test. You'll see this car on the channel in years to come. I'll probably do a six month update, a year update, and just kind of see how this thing is, you know, living its life after it's had a rebirth, if you will. That's the thing, it's especially because I imagine so much of the clear coat has been oxidized and so much we're gonna be knocking off with this process. Yes. We might not even have clear in certain areas. So some sort of protection, whether it's a ceramic coat is necessary. Now I'm fully expecting that at some point in the future, we will have to repaint this entire yep. car. And when we go through that, we'll probably take the, the famous dent out of it and really get it back to, to good as new. But I think also it's kind of an interesting experiment on a car that we know the paint's already kind of trashed. Let's have some fun. Let's learn what happens to old beat up paint on a car that's never been driven. It's not like they've had a bunch of bug guts splattered all over. Right. It has bird droppings. Yes, but uh, it's actually pretty a, a unique opportunity, I think, to play around with just paint that's been baking outside. Totally agree. And, uh, you know, my thought going into this is, OK, that preservation aspect as a detailer, I never want to burn paint. Now, I think the roof and the hood, the likelihood of this happening is you know, well over 50%. Sure. And, sure. you know, Kyle and I have, of course, had discussions on that and saying, you know what, if we do burn an edge, if we do burn through areas like this, this I don't expect to come back at all. This is yeah, completely this looks failed. Like down to the metal. Exactly. And you can even kind of see in here um, where probably the actual color coat is. So just for example, typical cars, you know, they're primered, then they have a color coat, then they have a clear coat. This, of course, was not in the era of single stage paint. Actually, I kind of wish it was because we wouldn't have to deal with that super oxidized clear coat. Take off the top layer would be good to go. But I think we can really restore this thing back to a pretty surprising um, level of detail here. You know, areas like this on the wipers, we can get some new wipers to knock all this rust off of here. I can treat all of this stuff. This will get all cleaned and restored as much as possible. Of course, we have some cracks and things like that here. But again, we can't source parts for this, so we need to be gentle and we need to keep that preservation mindset in this. I'm also looking at areas like the headlights here. I purchased a full headlight restoration kit. These are of course extremely oxidized from sitting out in the sun for so long. We're gonna bring those back, make them look crystal clear. And so they I may- probably will come back pretty nice because yeah. they're not pitted. Yeah, they're because not pitted like, at this all. This car has no damage. That's the thing, underneath all this oxidation is probably not one swirl mark. Uh, there's swirl marks everywhere. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so it, it could have been washed. It could have okay. been from the detailer who quickly just rinsed it off. But honestly, yeah. I, I don't know. Going into this, I mean, like I said, I did this test spot and it was like, oh my God, this thing has some serious life in it. And I'm super pumped for it. And I know Kyle is too. So um, other than that. Let's go around the back. Yeah, let's go around the back here because. These side moldings, I think, are pretty much irreplaceable. Okay. And they do pop off. So we can just glue them on if they pop off. Okay. The taillights look freaking great. Yeah. Whoever did the plastics on the taillight totally knew what they were doing. Agreed. And that's honestly what I see on a lot of cars, which is interesting to me that, you know, taillights stay a lot nicer than headlights do, yeah. which you would kind of want the opposite maybe. That's I interesting. <laughs> I, I totally agree. You never see oxidized taillights. No. So I mean, why don't they just use that on the front? It's I, not like this has been driven. No. <laughs> so, you know, it can't, you can't just say it's been hit up front with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, my thought would be maybe the red tint has something to do with it. Maybe, I'm not exactly like sure. Even here on the clear tint, that looks yeah. mint. I mean, look how clean this looks. And of course, once I get this, you know, compounded and polished, it's even going to come out even better. The rear trunk lid, to me, honestly, is a great step. I mean, compared to the roof here that looks like it's just fully matte painted, this actually held up quite well, which is interesting. And the metal here is really wild. There's no insulation in it. Yeah, especially on the roof, you really hear this hollowness. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like a drum. <laughs> it, it really is. So that's pretty awesome. Um, of course, you know, the badges back here, we're not gonna have replacements. I am nowhere near going to try and take these off and try to replace them. We'll work around it, try and get these as nice as humanly possible. Yeah, the, the goal for the Coda is not like what we did with my Model S, which is let's make it perfect. Right. This is let's make it presentable and and not, you know, try and get it so it doesn't uh, deteriorate anymore as the years go. Just cool stuff back here. I mean, I know we had this detailed, but it looked kind of gross. I didn't. I actually did see it one time, I think. I just quickly looked at it before they detailed it, but there was some white stuff back here. I don't even know what it was. <laughs> the shreddings of something. Shreddings know. of something yeah. could have been. I actually don't think it was that gross. It's fun to imagine what could be back there, but I think there was, there was like a used pair of jeans and some underwear. Yeah. And then really nothing that crazy right. beyond that. It, it could have just been like someone spent one night in here while it was on the lot. Could have been. Because it was left unlocked. You know, someone could have just needed shelter or something for a night. Of course. The Coda provided shelter, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but they stole my head unit, so I'm not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, not um, a fair trade off there. I think that no matter what we do, this is going to look so much better than today. I think it's interesting to do that ceramic coat test because ultimately we do know it is going to need a repaint in another yep. three, five, 10 years, whatever it is. And again, this is one that we aren't ever really going to get rid of. So let's experiment with it. Let's have fun. And um, yeah, in terms of the interior, what's your plan on the seats and everything? So are you going to do a, a, some sort of coating to rejuvenate the leather a little bit or what, what are you thinking? Yeah, honestly, I haven't talked about this much on the channel. I'm not a huge fan of conditioners. Right. Um, conditioners because most modern vehicles, actually most people don't even know this, they're not raw leather. They typically actually have a clear coat over them. Sure. And a lot of the times when you put a lot of conditioner on that, it basically clogs the pores of that and then it starts attracting dirt. Um, it makes them shiny, which both you and I hate. Hate shiny interiors. Yeah, like, no <laughs> yeah. thank you, please. Yeah. We actually asked the detailer, can you clean this? Don't put anything. Cause yeah, don't like armor all anything yeah. in here. Yeah, whatever. absolutely not. <laughs> and I will say the nice thing is you know it doesn't have smoke smell in it like the new e-golf you just right. purchased My so e golf reeks a little bit but this <laughs> one that'll be another upcoming one how do you get rid of smoke smell yes in yes. a car so definitely need to talk about that because we don't want to be destroying plastics especially on something like this the e-golf we don't really care you can replace literally every part for pennies on that it's a mark 7 golf yeah Everything's exactly available. <laughs> so lots of cool stuff here i would say my two main areas of concern of course are the roof and the hood Honestly, the rest of the car, even down the doors here, you can see some matting here. I don't foresee any sort of issue getting all of this out here. Of course, I'm going to take some paint readings on this before we truly start get polishing on it. So in the next video, this will come out pretty much all in series. So you guys are going to get a full Coda restoration on the abandoned brand new vehicle coming up over the Christmas time, hopefully ending. Can we give it a first years. wash in this video? If you would like to, I we think we should do can. first wash on this one. Everyone likes to wash you, watch you wash cars. Okay. I'll help you with it too. Okay, so fair we'll enough. do that. But a um, couple things I wanted to point out before we start on the process. The first is we're going to charge it up because the title's coming and because everything's coming and it's an LFP battery. We're going to charge it up to a hundred percent and let it top calibrate. Okay. So we're going to just leave it on the charger and I think it's at 20% now or something like that. So we'll just bring it up to a hundred and let it figure out what's going on with life. It has not been full charged in over 10 years. <laughs> I think we charged it here to 80% indicated and then I pulled it off, but being LFP, like Tesla recommends a weekly full charge so it can calibrate. Right. So this is probably going to require a few times of just hitting it at 100%, maybe running climate control to bring it down a little bit, back up to 100% just to show it what's going on up there. The next thing is the door handles are unbelievably temperamental. Yes. So we have to be really, you can't just like rip the door handle because I think it'll just come with your hand. Okay. <laughs> so it's one of those you just want to put a little bit of outward pressure okay. on. Fair enough. Um, that's just something to, to keep in mind. And then other than that, um, I think we're good to go. I mean, the thing is, I'm not sure how much of the trim is shared with the high face shy bow. So if anyone in China is watching and like you can get plastics and components for this thing in China, let us know. And we might give you a list of stuff to send our way. Um, we do have some Chinese viewers, so that could be interesting for them to, to see what's available on their part lists. 
Definitely. So I think plan now is let's give the Coda its first real bath. And then in the next video, we're going to go into paint readings, get into compounding, polishing, and then probably, you know, the third or fourth, I may make a dedicated headlight video because I know a lot of people are super interested about that. Yeah. And then we'll get into the preservation aspect of putting a ceramic coating on here, getting all the trim restored, nice, deep and black, getting all areas like the rubber window surrounds really cleaned up so it looks a lot nicer and doesn't continue to age. So let's get washing this bad boy. So now time for a little bit of wash and talk with both Kyle and I. And so what you guys saw first off, we foamed this thing down. I wanted to quickly kind of break down a little bit of that really heavy soaked on dirt. Also went in just around all the nooks and crannies trying to flush out that dirt, of course, then doing a second rinse and now re-foaming. So I've actually got our buckets already prepped over here. We're gonna be just be using microfiber towels. I don't wanna destroy my normal wash mitts. This is perfect for this situation. We're not really worried about scratching it too much. So let's just use some cheap microfibers, get the big crud knocked off of this and then get it dried. Yeah, and the other thing is you were mentioning to me um, the brushes around the badges and stuff. Yes. Like don't do that unless you're going to follow up with a po polish. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I see maintenance details all the time, like a freshly perfect ceramic coated vehicle. Then it comes in for a maintenance wash and you've got a guy doing this everywhere. I'm like, you guys are just scratching the crap out of the paint. Yeah. Let's knock we, that off. We can induce some scratches now. Yes. Because we're gonna take them out later. Exactly, <laughs> so no real big deal. We do have a two bucket wash. I know this may be quite crazy for this particular vehicle at the current state, but let's get washing here. So Kyle's got his wash on one side. I think he's gonna take on the driver's side. Yeah, 
and we'll do a little folding race in here, halves maybe. or quarters or what do you I doing like here? to go quarters because okay. essentially you get eight sides on here okay oh man oh you could just feel <laughs> I've never <laughs> felt paint like this oh, it's boy. so rough wow oh my goodness that's a wild feeling and not a feeling that a detailer loves holy smokes oh, that is not good <laughs> no that is not good at all I would say so just as we wash this here, uh, Kyle, what are your thoughts on your realistic expectations on how this is going to turn out? Um, you know, I think it's going to, in certain areas, it's going to be interesting because here it looks kind of consistently bad. Okay. <laughs> and I think in, when we get it done, it's going to look incredibly perfect in certain sections. Yes. Uh, and then also really bad, like missing paint in others. Sure. So I think it's actually going to almost bring out more of the flaws. That's um, definitely, and especially with black cars, which you love, I swear every single EV that Kyle buys has to be black. Now. I don't know why that's the case, but it has been recently, <laughs> except for the, well, the Polestar was white. What's it? What's the B class color? Blue. Blue. Okay. So in the same shade of realm there, but yeah, honestly, the paint as you go down the sides here feels way better. So you can tell all that contamination is, of course, sitting up top. Just kind of doing a single panel at a I think time. I picked up some spiders. On oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's a few little critters uh, laying yeah. around here. We've found a little wasp nest in the charge part location, which yes. is interesting. Um, Gosh, you have to keep like remembering what side I haven't used yet. Got to have that process. That's always honestly one of the hardest part of detailing is remembering where you're at. It's just a process, process, process. Now I'm going to hit the hood over here. I haven't touched the really bad stuff yet. Actually, it feels smoother than that back section I was working on. Okay, doors feel great over here. Wow. Yeah, they do. And I'm sure somebody's going to ask, am I going to clay this? Um, I don't know yet. I think you should. You're not a clay guy. I'm not a clay guy, um, being that a lot of the time I work on new cars and I find it does more damage than good. Um, this is a new car. It, yes, it is a new car that is, you know, sat outside forever. And whoa, I'm feeling some spots over here. I pointed these out once we kind of got that top layer of dirt knocked off. There are some bird poop stains. What do you want me to do with this old towel? You can put it in the rinse bucket. Okay. We honestly didn't even need a rinse bucket. Did, didn't need it. But um, some of the bird poop stains on here actually bubbled up the clear coat, which is uh, interesting. So I we'll think we can also probably be pretty sure that the original paint job of the Coda is not of Porsche quality. Oh, I, I'm a thousand percent sure that is not the case. <laughs> now, it may be recent Tesla paint quality, but... <laughs> sure. I'm just, sure. I'm just like, <laughs> Some Teslas are good. Yeah, they are. They really are. But um, yeah, I'm anxious to test this paint out. I haven't even stuck in... Stuck in? I have not stuck a paint meter on here yet. So right. that is really of interest to me of, okay, what does the paint actually look like? Do we have four mils of paint do we have one i don't even know so. and will that be in the next episode then absolutely yeah so this episode really we're just you know focusing on the story of the car building that a little bit and uh, of course it's first real bath and then we'll get into okay where do we even start on this thing in the next episode take some paint readings and actually get paint correction done and polishing done and uh, then work on the preservation stage for sure. Cool. Can't wait to uh, watch this unfold. Can't wait for the headlights to come back. I think the headlights are going to just bring years off the appearance. Oh, totally agree. Of this one. Totally, totally agree. It's interesting to see a car that looks this bad on the outside, but then you look underneath it and it's fresh. Yeah, honestly, I'm surprised at the lack of rust on it. Yeah. Especially being in Northern California area. Yeah, but San Jose isn't like the worst. No, it's definitely not. It's definitely a little bit drier. Um, a few things I do want to say as far as the washing on this. I'm not going for a crazy in-depth, get every single last piece of dirt off right now. I just want to have a nice canvas to be able to come in here, start the paint correction. Paint correction is very, very messy. Um, lots of compound dust going everywhere. I'm going to be going through pads, just blowing through them. Um, so. Yeah, honestly, I don't feel the need to do that. 
all kind of see, I'm actually surprised at how smooth the paint feels just after that wash. You can definitely feel that there's, okay, yeah, some sap and things like that on there. But just that initial wash made things so much nicer. So much smoother. Yeah, just getting that crud off of there. I did actually, which a lot of you are probably gonna think I'm insane, put some dish soap in not only the wash bucket, but the actual foam cannon. Um, you definitely don't wanna be using this when you have a coated car or things like that. But on something like this, we're trying to strip everything off, really good at breaking down grease and dirt and kind of lifting things out. So I think now that we've got a pretty good general hand wash, we're gonna rinse it one more time and then finally dry it. Well, after a first wash, I'm pretty happy with how the Coda is actually looking here. The water is just absorbed into the paint, as you can tell here on the roof. This thing was truly hard to actually dry. It, the paint is just so dry. Think of it like your hands are super dry and cracked. They just need moisture, and that's what this paint needs. Just that top layer knocked off and really start to reinvigorate the paint here. I truly, guys, am so excited for this series and to be able to bring it to you on YouTube and you be able to follow the story on this. Something like this, yes, it may look like a mundane electric vehicle to most people, but having less than 120 of these or whatever the number is, a very, very small number of these vehicles in the world, I think is just truly awesome. And the way the EV community has brought this car to Kyle and then to here for me to actually share and progress the story with this car, I just think is one of the coolest things out there. Now, from a detailing perspective, this probably be will be one of the biggest challenges I've worked on. And I'm not chasing perfection here. My detailer's brain is going to be going the whole time, say, push it a little more, push it a little more, push it a little more, try and get this thing perfect. But I have to remember pre preservation here. It is so incredibly important. We can't hammer this thing. We need to be gentle with this vehicle, but I still think we can do a lot to transform it. Again, one thing that I am very concerned about is burning paint. No detailer likes to burn paint. That is absolutely not the goal here. Now, the likelihood of that happening, like I said here, is probably at an all time high. And yeah, if we do have to get some things repainted, we have to get some things repainted. It's nice going into this with someone like Kyle who is willing to say, hey, go for it and see what you can do. But I think there's a lot of work to be done uh, man, oh man, I can't wait to bring you guys this series. It's gonna be multiple videos, hopefully out before the end of the year. Hopefully you can follow along with the abandoned, super rare electric vehicle with only 57 miles on it. Thanks so much for watching another out of spec detailing video. Can't wait to see you in the next one soon. Bye-bye.